everybody, Elin here today. I come to you guys with my October book haul. I'm really sorry if you can hear the washing machine in the background because, you know, it's trying to dry shit. Anyways, um, today I have seven books to talk to you guys about. So yeah, let's get started. The first one is Places We've Never Been by Casey West. And this is a YA contemporary book. It also involves road trips, which is definitely something I don't usually like, which is why I was so surprised that I really love this book. I mean, it is Casey West. She's one of my Audible authors. So that part wasn't very surprising. Um, it's just that I usually don't enjoy books that like moving po from point A to point B very much. But I mean, I've been reading a lot of adult fantasy lately. So maybe that's <laughs> what changed my mind. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the characters of this book. We meet, what are their faces? We meet Nora and Skylar, and they were friends uh, as children, but then Skylar ended up moving away after a few years, and now they're going on this sort of road trip together with their entire families, just to, you know, like a lost big hooray uh, of the summer. And at first it's awkward, they don't really know where they have each other because they haven't even talked to each other in like a year or two. And it's awkward, they don't really know what to do so they kind of avoid each other and it's like really stiff and awkward. Um, but of course they end up realizing their feelings for each other because contemporary. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the characters in this one. It's really like a lot of banter and it's fun and there's so much shit happening in this book. So I think you ended up giving it five out of five stars. And you should also know that this has been a really good reading month. Uh, not quantity-wise, but quality-wise. Um, because we also have Grimm by Sarah Bermak Elfkian. And this is... I don't even know how to describe this. Basically, there's this guy named Grimm. He was in a band called Dark Cruelty as a teenager. He played along with this guy named Håkan and a bunch of other uh, teenagers. And then one day, Grimm ends up dead. And that's the end of the band. They, like, cancel everything. And uh, that's, like, the past that we get to have flashbacks through. And then in the present, we meet Casper, who's actually the son of... Håkan, and Casper is trying to figure out what happened to Grimm, how did he die, what led up to his death and everything like that. So yeah, this was spooky, it was weird, uh, it was really really well written characters and I really enjoyed it and it was a quick read. So I ended up giving this book 5 out of 5 stars. And then we have Konferensen by Mats Strandberg. Uh, this was also a really really good read, really disturbing, really morbid, really gross, really bloody but also a really good book. Um, so this is not like the typical genre that I usually pick up, but I mean, it's Mats Strandberg. That's like one of my go-to very, very few Swedish authors that I do actually read from. In this one, basically there's a lot of people from this uh, sort of company. They're supposed to start the building of the a new mall in a very like small um, town. And uh, they're going on a conference to this sort of little cottage kind of bed and breakfast type place. Shit ends up happening while on this conference and they're supposed to, you know, get to know each other and like have sort of meetings and like trust exercises and shit. And that's all well until the people start up, start to end up dead. And there's bodies everywhere. Like there were 12 from the start. They're not 12 by the end, I can tell you that much. But the characters are just so well written. Like, you have the characters you like, you have the characters you don't like, you have the characters that you don't really know what to do with. And there's so many, like, relationships in between the characters, professional ones, friendship, maybe even some love intrigues. And there's so much shit going on. And then the whole mall building type thing, that's an entire subject on its own, honestly. And um, yeah, this was so dark. And when people start dying, let's just say you get all the itty, gritty, greasy, disgusting details that I really don't need it in my life. But, you know, it was such a good read. And I gave this five out of five stars. And then we have Remina by Junji Ito. This is a very, very weird book honestly. Um, so we follow Dr. Oguro and he actually ends up finding this planet that has 
previously been unknown to the human society and he ends up naming it after his daughter which is Ramana and then they find out that the planet is sort of absorbing all of the other planets in the system and it's heading straight for Earth which is problematic all on its own but you know freak that people think that they the Dr. Oguro and Romina are the reason behind their imminent destruction. So shit goes down. So this was really weird, um, very quick read, um, and also like beautiful illustrations. Uh, and yeah, I really do want to read more by Junji Ito, but yeah, it was definitely weird. Um, I think I gave this like four out of five stars. And then we have the last physical book that I read because I do have two audiobooks to talk about too. Um, but this is The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. This is a middle grade book. This is supposed to be sort of spooky, creepy kind of read. And honestly, this took me a week to read. And this is like 229 pages because I was not feeling it, people. So basically, there's these sort of jumbies hidden in the forest, kind of a magical sort of beings that are kind of evil. And we have the main character, um, Corinne, and... She finds out some secrets about her family and some secrets about the forest. And there was kind of a war in between the jumbies and the people. They have to basically save their city, Corinna and her friends. And shit goes down. Uh, but yeah, I, just, I wasn't very invested in the characters. And yeah, I thought it was kind of... Considering how thin this book is, it just felt like it was not really moving forward very much. And I was like not invested in what was happening. And then we have the first audiobook that I listened to and that is Erin Berg om stolthet by Emma Schulz and Frida Finemir. And basically this is the sort of autobiography of Emma who wakes up in the middle of the night uh, realizing that the house is on fire. And basically she woke up because two of her kids started screaming, fire, fire. And um, yeah, she's trying to save, she has six kids, her husband works nights, so he's not home at the moment. Um, she does everything in her power to be able to save her six kids. And this is not a spoiler, but she ends up saving them all. Uh, that's like really remarkable. And this is basically her telling you what went through her mind and what happened during the fire, but also her very, very long recovery after the fire and this like especially during the fire it's so like descriptive and like all the integrated details you get to know everything what it's like how the body reacts to intense intense heat and what happens when a human is basically really you know literally on fire and um, that was very visual and uh yeah just a lot of heartfelt moments and like everything and I was definitely very close to tears a few times in this book um, but yeah I ended up giving it I think four out of five stars and then we have Jo kommer sen by Eva Wiklund this is also a audiobook and this is basically um, a another book about a fire I don't know why I like snowed in on that subject um, definitely felt like I needed a pause after these two books because they were so like tough to get through and listen to um, but this one basically takes a place in 90s and we get to know what happened during the big fire that took place in Gothenburg at this point um, and I mean everyone who lives in Gothenburg knows like what this is and what happened and why and stuff like that um, it was a really really big deal because there was sort of this party and there was, for starters, way, way too many teenagers at the party because there were like, over like 400 people there and there was not supposed to be that many. Um, but also 63 teenagers ended up dying in the fire because a couple of teenage boys did not want to pay 40 Swedish crowns to get in. And that's like nothing, honestly. And then they started the fire because they wanted to get in for free. So yeah that's a really horrible stupid excuse to do something like this um but yeah it is really something that everyone's aware of in Gothenburg um but yeah so basically we get to find uh 
we get to follow um, like one of the mothers to one of the girls that died, uh, Johanna, and we also get to follow her uh, friend Gilda a little bit too, and they both ended up dying in the fire. And basically we get to find out um, what Johanna was like as a child and growing up until the fire, because she was, I think, 15, 16 when she died. Um, and also the sort of recovery for the mother and her relatives after the fire like how do you get through something this life changing that should not have happened at all um so yeah this book definitely made me close to tears as well because you get to know like all the details everything like the firemen and police tells them and it's just it's a lot um but yeah it was a really good book um but definitely hard to get through so i ended up giving this book four to five stars so yeah those were all of the seven books i ended up reading this month hopefully there will be more in november but <laughs> no myself probably not um but yeah if you've read any of these books please let me know down below what you thought about them without spoiling of course and yeah i hope we see each other in the next one bye